the power of the sea. But we need the Spirit's help. Amen. And thank God, He says He'll help us. There's many places in the Word He tells us this. But let me read a familiar place in 2 Corinthians 10, beginning with verse 3. If you're with me, say amen. amen. I'm reading from the Amplified Version just to bring out more um, interpretation. It says, For though we walk in the flesh as mortal men, we are not carrying on our spiritual warfare according to the flesh and using the weapons of man. So important. As we're dealing with what we call everyday life, these are things that many people go through. And it's true. The Bible says that what you're going through, there are people, brothers and sisters all over the world going through them as well. That's why the enemy lies to you and says you're the only one. He's a big fat liar because God's word says there are people all over the world going through the same things that you're going through. That's right. So you're not the only one. But what he wants you to what he wants you to think is that this is just life. This is the way it's meant to be. And so I just need to accept that and put up with that. No, I not. And just deal with it with the flesh. But he says very powerfully here that though we are flesh and blood, we have this earthly body while we're waiting on our glorified body. We do not fight our spiritual warfare with weapons of the flesh. They are not weapons of man. So sharp words, arguments, words of divisiveness, and the list goes on, are not the weapons that change the realities in spiritual warfare to be what we want God to produce in our life, our families. And ultimately our world. That's right. He says the weapons of our warfare are not physical. Weapons of flesh and blood. Our weapons are divinely powerful. For the destruction of fortresses. He's talking about the fortresses of Satan. When you build a fortress. You are building a barrier. A strong barrier. So the enemy cannot. Pass over that fortress and get a hold of you. But you can move around in that fortress and take shots at your enemy. At your enemy. Wow. And so the enemy does his best to build fortresses uh -huh. in our mind and around us. That even as we take shots at him, he's got this, these layers built. Mm. Layers built of, of life, layers built of, of decisions, layers built of our past situations and circumstances and difficulties and heartaches and disappointments. Does anybody hear what I'm saying? And so it's layer upon layer upon layer that becomes this huge fortress, but it's not too big for God. That's right. Yes, amen. From parental disappointments. To disappointments, friends, disappointments, and people in general, disappointments in ourselves. Not and on the list goes. These things add up. And as they add up, they become like a layer upon layer of a fortress that is created in our mind. And the goal of the enemy is to grab every thought that comes from God and keep it from settling. In your mind. Yes. Right. From settling in your present mind, will, and emotion. Your soul. Yeah. But your present mind, will, and emotion, though it is temporal, it has heaven available before you go to heaven. Amen. Amen. Yes. To bring down the fortresses of hell. That's what, that's what he's saying here. We have weapons that are so powerful, they kick down the fortresses of hell. Let's keep reading. We are destroying sophisticated arguments and every exalted 
and proud thing that sets itself up against the true knowledge of God. And we are taking every thought and purpose captive to the obedience of Christ. Being ready to punish every act of disobedience when your obedience as a church is complete. That was just a whole mouthful. What he's saying here is we are destroying sophisticated arguments. You understand and you remember the Bible says that he confounds the wise with foolish things. I mean, you know, Jesus, he used spit and mud to heal blind eyes. Foolish things. Foolish things. And so he, he uses foolish things to confound the wise. And so in the wisdom of man, these, there are these sophisticated arguments. There are these cases that are built on propaganda, on actual facts of things that happen. But behind the fact of what happened, you don't know the detail of what was going on in that person's life and in their situation and what they were saying.